welcome back. Hopefully you watched the introductory video before this one. If you haven't, then please go back and watch that. Something that I failed to mention in the introduction is that I've only just updated the software myself. So the layout has changed slightly. I may even get a bit lost um, looking for certain things. I need to get up to speed with the new software myself. Um, so please just be patient with me um, if things have moved and it takes me a little while to find them. So in this first video, I'm going to go through the nominal ledger or the nominal module. And that is found to the left here, nominal codes. So if you click on the nominal codes link, the button, you'll come to a screen that looks like this. If it doesn't look like this, then the layout is probably selected differently. Um, so there's a nominal list that looks like this. There's an analyzer, which is more of a concentrated way of looking at the nominal ledger. And there's also a graph. If there's nothing entered on Sage, like the software um, that I have in front of me, the, the account I have in front of me, then it will be pretty much blank. So there are no transactions on Sage, the transaction number is zero. I haven't entered anything on Sage yet, but by the end of this tutorial, um, we should have quite a, a complex system um, set up. There should be a number of transactions. Um, you should be able to see how the software works. So going to nominal list, I prefer the list layout to the analyzer, um, just because with the analyzer you have to really click on things and open them, open them up. But if you're new to the software, then the analyzer might be better because the codes are under categories like sales. We have total sales, product sales, export sales, sales of assets, etc. So you can just click on them and it brings up the nominal code. If you're not familiar with bookkeeping and accounting, a nominal code is an account or it's a, a code assigned to an account which you will book transactions to. So if you have a sale, let's say a product sale, it's likely that that transaction on Sage will be booked to one of these codes, perhaps sales type A, the 4000 code. Looking at other codes, Total purchases, let's look at um, overhead. So total overheads, if I click on that, there's wages, rent and rates, motor expenses, professional fees, printing and stationary depreciation, bad debts, um, telephone and computer charges. All of these codes are already set up on Sage by default. Um, so you probably won't have to worry about adding too many codes in the beginning, but I will go through that with you. So these are just all codes and you can have a look. The best way to get to know Sage is just to play around with it. You're not going to make any big errors, uh, trust me. So just play around, look at all the different codes, but I actually prefer the list which doesn't put the codes in categories, but actually lists them in numeric order. So we have zero all the way down, if I use the, the bar at the side here, all the way to 9,000, so 9,999. So these are all the codes. They're the same codes as shown on the analyzer, but these are in numeric order, whereas these are listed by category. Now there are a lot of codes on here, you know, just scrolling through, it might seem a bit overwhelming at first, but really don't worry about it. If there are certain codes you can't find, then you can list them in alphabetical order by clicking on this name title here. So if I click on that, it puts them in alphabetical order, accounting, C fees, all the way to work in progress. So lots of codes. If you're the bookkeeper of the business, you probably won't use half of the codes on here. So don't worry about um, trying to remember them all. But there is a system in place. There is sense to all these codes. Um, generally, the first number of the code distinguishes which category the code falls under. So there'll be codes for assets, codes for sales, codes for liabilities,
codes for purchases and so forth and you should be able to see that this here so if I go to the 4000 codes I can do that by scrolling or if I just click 4 on my keypad it goes to the 4000 codes you'll see all the 4000 codes are sales related codes so sales type A, sales type B, sales type C all the way to distribution and carriage sales royalties received, sales of assets, sales type E and so forth. 7,000 codes are overhead, so if I put 7 in, it takes me to 7,000 codes. And you'll see on here there are wages and salaries, rent, rates, gas, oil, motor expenses, mileage claims, car hire, printing, subsistence, stationery, computers and software, legal fees. They're all here. So just have a look through uh, and, and see for yourself you know you'll get to know the software the more you you play around with it there are a couple of ways to learn the codes a bit quicker or there are a couple of ways that may help you um, to find a code the first is to put them in alphabetical order um, if you're looking for let's say accountancy fees to book an expense to accountancy fees if you put it in name order it's easier to find accountancy fees in alphabetical order rather than the code when it's in numerical order. You can also go to reports at the top here. If I click on that, it might just take a little while to load up. Okay, and go to nominal details and then nominal list and I'll preview that. Another box will appear, just click OK. And you'll see that all the codes are listed. So this is a nominal list report. So all the codes are listed. So it can help people to have a hard copy. You can just print this off, print there, or export it and save it on your computer as a PDF or something like that. But it can help some people to have a hard copy that they can refer to rather than trying to find it on the computer. So all I did there was go to reports, nominal details, and then nominal list. There's a print option and a print preview option. And there are some other options too um, that help you to export or email the list or the report you're running you'll find that a lot of these modules are very similar and once you get to know one module you know many of modules because the customer module the reports is in the same place and the same boxes appear same with the bank account reports is up here look i click on that the same sort of box appears uh, I'm quite confident that as you go through these tutorials and practice, you'll get to know the software pretty quickly. Another way to help you learn the nominal codes um, and why they are the number they are, if you go to chart of accounts here, so the seventh box along on my software, chart of accounts, if I click on that, a new box will appear. It will say default layer of accounts. That should be highlighted. Just Double click on that. Another box will appear that looks like this. This breaks down the numbers by category. So on the profit and loss statement, we have sales that's highlighted. They're all 4,000 codes. If I go to purchases, they're all 5,000 codes. Direct expenses are 6,000. Overheads are 7,000 and 8,000, I believe. Let's have a look. Okay, 7,000, 8,000, and 9,000. Taxation codes are 9,000. Balance sheet, uh, fixed assets are zero codes. Current assets, 1,000 codes. Current liabilities, 2,000 codes. Long-term liabilities, 2,000 codes. And capital and reserves, 3,000 codes. 
Now, if you don't understand what some of these things are, like capital and reserves, assets and liabilities, then don't worry about it because it's something your accountant will likely deal with. If you're keeping the books, say the sales and purchase ledger, then most of your transactions are just going to be on the profit and loss and to do with sales and expenses. Um, so don't get too worried about all the uh, the names and terminology. I think that's it for this video. Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to add new nominal codes or accounts if they're not showing.